Hey, uh, welcome to another monthly studio report for Broken Hammer Games. I'm founder and CEO of Broken Hammer Games, writer of the project and various other titles. And so this is a report for the month of August 2021. So sit right back and I hope you I hope you enjoy this monthly report and maybe you find out something new about us. So let's go ahead and get started. So the big thing we wanted to talk about to this month is that we did get the demo out. Now this isn't the original demo that we were intending to release for All Is Fair and Dust and Air, uh, but we kind of, during the month of July, we had to really kind of consider a few things about what the demo was going to be, how it was going to play out. The initial build we had going into July was more of like, you're taking the entire section up until the day one segment was done so we were doing a huge chunk of the de of, of it was the demo and then the problem was is that when we analyzed that going into august and we started really thinking about it, we we're like well, wait a minute this is I mean, some of the complaints that we've had have generally been involving well the gramps se segment is a bit long people didn't like that it didn't give them enough to really want to get into the game get into the story so we decided okay we're, we're going to have to change that we're going to have to cut that and readjust it so what we ended up doing was we ended up just basically looking at what what are we going to do what is going to really give a, a good first encounter with the dust and air universe and Vince Vickers universe and then we decided well we've been kind of dancing around it for a long time like who is going to be the poster girl of the project and it ended up we decided well you know what we're already pushing Gwyn. Gwyn is the number one favorite in just about every single thing we're doing right now when we do the decals um, Gwyn is like number one by a gigantic margin everybody loves Gwyn so she pretty much became the poster girl the official official poster girl so yay Gwen is the poster girl of all is fair and best in air and for those that love the uh, fjord baronies in guns of icarus i'm sure you're cheering you yeah <laughs> uh, anyway so we, we decided we were going to take her first encounter segment we're going to extract that we're going to put it into a demo build now there was some little qualms some little issues with this and the fact that is when you go to the full game so if you transit from the demo to the full game the demo is is kind of like a cutout segment from the full game so it doesn't if you try to save and how the save system works in Tyrno, sometimes it takes like a, a snapshot of the game and we did, we, while we tested some things, we're just we're not confident that you can transfer your save from the demo to the full game. And you're also missing the entire chunk before Gwen. So this is kind of like it's like a hit or miss thing. Do we include the beginning? So we ended up, we decided, let's focus on Gwen. Let's focus on the strong points. So yeah, go ahead and check us out on our, our Steam store page if you haven't already. The demo is up there. And if you're on the fence, definitely check it out. Uh, hopefully it will kind of give you a little bit of encouragement that yeah we are here to stay we're not going to just take money and get out of here no we want to see this story completed i want to see the story completed i want to see every single story completed. so i'm going to be here for a long time so get used to seeing my face if you don't like it well thanks bye <laughs> sorry anyways um the biggest issue that we also had going into august was we had a lot of issues with our final art that was needed to complete Dust and Air's early access phase. Now we were waiting on like roughly um, the one major background piece for this the cityscape of Will's hometown, which is Mall, and then we also had like another warehouse scene that we needed to get. We needed to get these two done. And the problem is we have events going on in the world. As you have been watching, Europe, it's a mess right now. Protests, everything. So. Um, to say the least, yeah, we, our artists were like going into June earlier. They were like, yeah, yeah, we can get this done. We already had it arranged. They were already planning on it. We had one that was going to be traveling during the time. He was confident. Yeah, he can, he can get it done. And then all this stuff hit and it's impacted their schedule. So we ha they had to push back another month and it looks like we're going to go into September now the way it's going because we did we did get the one thing done we did get the warehouse done if you're if you're reading the main blog you'll see one image of the warehouse now I'm going to show some more images because it's the vlog and I'm just going to go into a little bit more for those that are watching us and um, 
I'll go into that in a second here. So, there we go. Okay, so this is the scene. Now, it's simple. It's just a very basic warehouse sort of scene. But it was necessary because this is going to be building on a lot of stuff in the future. Everything is going to be starting from this warehouse scene in Mall. And as you can see, it was not just a simple scene. We needed night segments. So we needed a segment in dusk, at night and um, we also need an airship so for those that have been wanting to know what the weird junker is that we talk about in the story this is it this is your major teaser it's also behind me uh, this is the chin up sunrise it is uh, the uh, weird modified j uh, junker that uh, William is going to be using in the main story arcs so it'll be his ship. You're going to be seeing it quite often. And this was another reason why this set of images took a real long time because uh, it was a lot of work. Uh, Georgie had to figure out, well, this is how it's going to work, and how is it supposed to, how is the modifications going to work? And as you can see, this is like an early, early concept I did, like. As you can see, it's very bad. I am not an artist. I just basically drew some things in like a drawing thing real quick just to kind of get an idea. But this was made um, oh, probably a few years ago. And as you can see, the original design, here's your Junker from Guns of Icarus in game. And what we needed was we needed something that was heavily modified. We needed something that was gonna look like a person had like, you know what, I need this for trading or I need that for tr for trading. So we needed like Chalodonian style pontoons for water landing. There are areas in the Guns of Vickers universe where they have water and we wanted to bring in, instead of airships being berthed always in the air and always on these like aerial platforms, we wanted to bring in the possibility of water landings. So that was one necessis, necessary thing, was bringing in the pontoons. We need pontoons. We also needed uh, to change the entire structure of the Junker so that it could have an actual cargo hold. That was one thing that, on um, the Muse, they did a very basic platform. It was very sturdy, very easy to, to build on, but they didn't really make something that had a cargo hold. So when looking at the design and figuring out where the prop was we decided to move the under under deck propeller get rid of that switch it to a quad engine design and then put this whole thing as a cargo hold underneath now those of you in the guns of Icarus community are probably going to be like oh yeah this is more, a bit more interesting like this is more the theory crafting on how all this ship design kind of works and how our our method our methods work on how we think about things now we also thought about it and like okay this ship's a cargo hauler. It is going to need crew berths. We need something that they can get in out of the elements and get a good night's sleep. Because think about it, if you're flying in the air and you're trying to get some sleep, it's a lot of wind, it's a lot of cold. That's not going to work. So okay, we need a crew berth. So what we did it was we took out the lower gun deck. So we got rid of the lower gun deck and we figured, okay, let's put the pontoons attachment in there and let's add in like a berths area. So. Overall, the main frame of the balloon and everything, and the ship is still kind of, there's a basic structure, but the rest has just been completely modified and done. And then as you look at the balloon, now the balloon did change a little bit, but we wanted a dually balloon. We did not want a single giant bag, because for one, when, when we consider that this thing is big, it's bulky, it's not streamlined, it's not meant for a ship that's doing any sort of trading. Anything, any sort of things like that. So that was one of the things we realized we had to do something about that. We had to change it. Now going back to the design, um, this is this design you can see. You can see all the things that I just talked about. You can see the dually balloons. We have both balloons. They're more of a streamlined look. So. This is designed to try and cut through the wind a little bit better. Even though this is a cargo hauler, um, it still it needed something to be a little bit more optimized. You can see the quad engine setup that we shifted the engines up. Now, originally the design called for these these two engines to be down below, like the Chalodonian style. But in the end, it was like 
Georgia said, okay, you know, let's just go ahead and put it up here so we have it connected up with, with the main deck. Now, as you notice, a lot of it has been changed out for wood design. Now, there is a metal substructure that is still there, but again, this is all kind of wood design. This is something that we've been working on for a lot of our ships and guns of Icarus is based on where it's made or the materials at hand is what's really going to decide how these ships kind of get a lot of get a lot of their repairs and a lot of their work done and so this was obviously the design was from probably Chaladon because of you have your pontoons based on Chaladon so there's a lot more trees there so your main building material would be wood that would be your modification material you still have your metal frame from the original design so either way it's a heavily modified design you can see the uh, balloon ballast system is now from on top it's been tucked under uh, we still have a ladder that goes up and touch these top engines and the uh, pilot station has kind of been moved a little bit forwards we also have cargo hold hatches that are that are, that are uh, tucked in right here and we have the traditional hole that is still existent in the guns of icarus uh, um, look here so either way this is a ship that we we are thinking, I mean, if this was adventure mode that Muse originally promised, then this would be an idea we would like to shoot Muse. It's like, hey, here's an actual cargo hauler that is made for the universe. So, anyways, I, I hope you enjoyed that right there. I hope it was a good little introduction to uh, our thinking and our ship design. You're going to be seeing a lot more of that in the future when we do story arcs and all the other aspects because we're gonna sit down we're gonna think about these ships and think about how can we modify the, the designs to actually be functional in a real life type of a world and real life setting try to bring it into reality as best as we can um, and so that was pretty much the month of, of um, August here uh, the other big background design, the, which we have teased, the big mole background, there was a little bit more of a holdup on that. It's actually very close. It just did not make it in during the month of August. It needs some more detailing, a little bits here and there put in. We do have that being worked on right now. Uh, we're hoping to kind of get this all going, at least do one patch before we leave Early Access where we release it. And then we do the full release out of Early Access during the month of S S September here. So, uh, what is the full release going to bring? What does this all entail? Well, it's pretty much going to be closure to the part of the story that we're writing right now. This is a closure to the Cathedral Arc story and all what we call the Neutral Arc. This ends the entire like setup where we bring all the characters together. At least you get to see them before we start the main story arcs. And we bridge from there. As far as the... Um, polish and going are we going to update this more after release from early access and that is yes of course we're going to be updating it more uh, there is still more polish to do uh, our primary goal here is getting this out of early access getting it released the polish that is going to be coming in there's going to be probably more sound effects uh, probably more pop-up images that we're going to be throwing in so it's a lot of little quali a little quality of life uh, polish passes. We might also do some polishes on some of the main key images. Georgie has kind of talked about this in the past that he wanted to update some of them from his original things that he did years and years ago because his art did get better with time. So that is going to be up to him if he wants to take that task. Uh, I mean, I cannot put a timetable on when that's going to be done. Our main focus is now going to be switching from this story on to the major DLC arcs. Now as far as the DLC arcs, we're we're going to be announcing um, some updates on that in the months ahead. Uh, I would guess probably by fall we'll have a good plan on what we're going to be doing with the uh, DLC, DLC arcs. I am I'm getting a lot more ideas on how we're going to do it. Now I will say that as with everything we are learning here. I'm learning here on this release, how we're going to do it and how to really get this done. Um, so I am willing to revisit plans as we go by. So later on, everything. I'm going to re revisit a lot of things before we go to release and also after release. What do we need to change? How do we need to change it? Is it going to work? Is it going to be the best option for us in the long run? So if we have to change anything on the, the uh, DLC, we'll update it probably by, by fall. Uh, and hopefully we'll get a new idea on that, on what we're going to do. So... 
Anyways, that's it for the month of August. Thanks for joining us today, and we'll see you in the skies. Johnny.